What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master One, and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys unit review and a lot of cool builds for Bride Micaiah, Nyla, Oboro, and Groom Raphael. And if you wanna jump to a specific character, then you can find the timestamps in the description right below that like button, so that could help you. And as always, I wanna thank Sheila Mercury for the layout. Her link is gonna be in the description as well. So let us begin, and let us start with Bride Micaiah. She's a duo unit who is a colorless flyer, which is extremely unique. And as always, she has got the effective damage against armored units and cavalry units. And she's really, really similar to all of the other versions of Micaiah with really similar stat spread with high attack, high resistance, and everything is pretty low. So this weapon is effective on those two types and it gives her plus three attack. And if she's got any kind of visible status or buff on her, then she gets plus six attack and resistance during the combat. And uh, the foe cannot make a follow-up attack. So basically, in the player phase, this uh, acts as an impact skill, which is really, really powerful because Mikaya is super slow. And being able to deny foe's follow-up attack in the player phase is going to be pretty helpful to her. She's also got an attack super boon on top of her monstrous attack, so that should not be any kind of surprise. The most interesting thing about Bride Mikaya is her duo skill, which can grant this dominance effect, which is a new effect. And it has got this AoE range in that column. So allies in that column will gain this status effect. And foes in that column will receive minus 7 defense and resistance to buff. Dominance basically lets the unit deal additional damage based on the total penalties on the foe for one turn. And this is actually not a Broadleaf fan effect. I know a lot of people were saying this is a Broadleaf effect, but the wording is completely different. And calling this Broadleaf is a bit of a misnomer because this is a different effect. It's even better than Broadleaf, I would say, because this gives you true damage. Yes, true damage. So just with her debuff from her dual skill, you get 14 true damage out of this. And if the foe has got minus 7 debuff to all of their stats, then you get 28 true damage. Look at this image for how ridiculous this can be. This is a level 1 Donal taking out an Edelgard, who has got the weapon strangle advantage, which doesn't matter uh, when it comes to true damage. And she's super bulky. So this image has pretty much gone viral in a sense uh, as soon as people found out that this does true damage. So this allows their units to be so powerful and give them a really nice damage output. So this can be used with Vantage Sweepers in Ether Raids or even with tanks because the tanks, as long as they can survive one hit, they have the true damage to, uh, you know, do more damage to the enemies and just recover HP with something like Noontime or Soul. The only restriction is that this duo skill can be used only once in a match, or if you've got the duo indulgence uh, structure in Ether Race, then it could be used multiple times, but in the regular course, this can only be used once. Whenever you use it, you have to make sure that you make the most out of this. The column AoE which this duo skill has got, it can be super restrictive at times outside of Ether Raids because if you're facing enemies on a horizontal map, this really doesn't do much for you. So in a sense, they have kind of made this for Ether Raids where all of the maps are going to be vertical all the time. So this can be used to get the debuff and the dominant status. Keep in mind that Broadly Fan adds the penalties to your attack. Meanwhile, Dominance adds the penalty to your true damage. This kind of true damage can be avoided by units and skills that can neutralize debuffs during the combat. For example, Fimble Vetter Brunia can do this and uh, units with Carrot Cudgel type of weapons or even with tier 4 bond skills can just ignore the true damage they take during the combat. But there are not a lot of units and skills that can consistently do this, so still there is a counterplay to this dominance effect. And uh, like it's really easy to get debuffs on the enemies with smoke skills, with chill skills, with stuff like Temari Dagger, with support units like Aversa and Iago, so overall this makes a very powerful duo skill. Because keep in mind, panic status penalties and debuff penalties do actually stack up, so that could give you even more true damage. You could even use this with Broadly Fan or Blade Tomes to get even more ridiculous damage output, but at that point, it's really an overkill, I would say. So it's not really that worth it, uh, but still, it's something that could be worked out. So Mikaya is a very powerful unit with a really useful duo skill. However, she is extremely slow, so she's gonna get doubled all the time, and there's just no way she can actually double foes consistently. And the fact that she's got such a low defense makes her really susceptible to any kind of powerful physical unit. Even if you run Iot Shield Sacred Seal on her, many of the competent archers will still be able to take her out because her HP isn't really the highest. So Mikaya is a strong unit as always, but she has very, very clear flaws. 
Micaiah effectively has 185 BST, so expect to see her a lot in Arena because whales are gonna be plus in merging her. So Arena seems to be becoming a bigger hellhole as the time progresses. Her first build is a super budget build. She already has a pretty good base kit. Really synergetic because the poor skills uh, damage is recovered by Mystic Boost. And Mystic Boost is really nice for her to deal with dragons. So you could just run Glimmer, have Death Blow, and you could run Reposition or Drawback as the assist skill. The second build is using Vantage. So because of the poor skills, she can reach into the Vantage range in two combats. And she can also enter the Brazen range. Or you could use the Sacrifice to make her enter into the range of these skills. So she could function as a Vantage Sweeper with this. She already has pretty high attack. And if you use her dual skill dominance, then she's going to be able to do even more damage. The third build is utilizing Heavy Blade. So she could use Iceberg or Glacies with Heavy Blade. And because she has got such a high attack, she can easily make use of this. She can also run a Close Counter Vantage build uh, with Speed Smoke and Attack Smoke. And this allows her to debuff all stats of the foe by minus 7 when she uses her dual skill. So this can give her 28 true damage. And that makes her a pretty good Vantage Sweeper. She already has pretty high attack, so I would say that running any kind of damaging special would be just an overkill. So in something like Aether Raids, you could run Miracle, and she might be able to survive some kind of hit. And she's already so bulky on the magical side that she can definitely take some magical hits here and there and charge up her Miracle. You could also use her as a Mage Tank with running Distant Defense 4. So this kind of build could be used in the Astra Season, um, where you could get defense from two Nagas. So she can have a pretty good mixed bulk and cav lines are pretty popular in Astro Season and this Micaiah can counter pick that kind of team pretty well. Against cav lines, just make sure you do not give her any kind of buffs because cav lines do have a lot of healers with Panic Staff. She doesn't care about healers, she's not going to be taking any damage from them but make sure you don't have any kind of buffs on her so that she doesn't get panicked. You can still trigger her weapons effect by using Dominance. So that status is going to be activating her weapons effect to give her more resistance and attack. She can also run a close foil build because she can easily one shot Dumas with her armor effectiveness. So close foil is pretty nice once you snipe that dragon. And uh, panic smoke is actually a pretty good option as well for the teams that use a lot of buffs. Because as I said panic penalties and debuffs do stack up. But as you go higher in ether rates you will run into many teams that just do not use any kind of buffs for the same reason to not get panicked so against them it doesn't really do anything. You can also run a support build for Aether Raids where she can provide you with the dominance effect. Someone like Kronia can use this kind of effect because she already has a Thame Dagger with Vantage and she can run uh, like uh, many sloppy skills like Disarm Trap, Null Counter Disrupt or Special Spiral. So this can just make her into a better Vantage Sweeper and this could be applied to any kind of Vantage Sweeper or any kind of tank actually because you could also run this with someone like Brave Ike. So a hardy bearing unit is going to be disabling his weapon refine. So he's going to be able to reduce the damage from the first hit. But because Brave Ike has got the dominance effect, he can actually get so much damage that he might just one shot these kinds of frail mages who have got hardy bearing. And many kind of tanks can actually tank really really well like someone like Henry but they don't have the attack stat. So Micaiah can just provide them with some damage output and, and Henry is Loki, a pretty nice anti-meta unit that's really cheap to build. So because of her high resistance, she can soak chill skills on resistance and even shrine debuffs depending on the unit you use her with her. And of course provide you with sabotage attack debuff. If you are someone who's like aiming to plus and merger, then this could be the max arena score build. Uh, threat and attack resistance is actually pretty good because it can provide the debuffs for her dominance and can also provide her buffs to activate her weapons effect. And close counter just allows her to take on dragons and ruptured sky is going to be helping her even more taking on dragons with mystic boost. And the final build is for Aether Raid's defense. Basically she could have a lot of gimmicks like sacrifice which does function as harsh command, aerobatics, ground orders. So she's got three gimmicks which can be pretty nice for making things unpredictable for the opponent. Groom Raphael is actually a 4 star focus unit on this banner so it's much easier for you to get him and he's a fantastic unit because of his Groom's wing and the fact that he's got a really really interesting stat spread. So I'm gonna be comparing my speculated stats to his actual stats, it's just something I do for fun. Um, so for Groom Raphael I did expect him to have pretty low attack but he actually has even uh, under 30 attack. I expected him to have high speed, he kinda has that but uh, he has got way more resistance than what I expected. 
So he has got incredibly high resistance, actually tying for the highest resistance in the game with Nagi and Winter Fey. So that is just ridiculous and opens up for some really really fun options as you will see with his builds. So Groomswing gives him plus 3 resistance and at start of turn 1, he can grant minus 1 special cooldown to a unit who is a support partner of his. So you have to use Alice support to make use of this weapon's effect. So this is pretty similar to Veluria's effect but instead of giving minus 2 special cooldown, he gives minus 1. Which is not really all that bad because he is a refresher unlike Veluria. So I guess it kind of balances it out. Raphael is an infantry dancer so he doesn't get an extra movement upon transformation like Raisin or Leon. So despite what his wings might lead you to believe, he's an infantry in it. And that's a fantastic reference to Radiant Dawn where his wings are permanently damaged and he cannot actually fly. Raphael on top of his ridiculous resistance has a super boon on that too. So that can make for some really fun meme builds as you will see. And Raphael's Groom's Wing effect is so useful for Gale Force units because Gale Force can be turned into a Fortin cooldown special and it could be triggered in two heads if you use something like Heavy Blade or Flashing Blade on that Gale Force unit. And he can be used to set up special spirals, so both in competitive gameplay, in ether raids, and also in in-game content, he does provide you with really nice utility with this minus one special cooldown. And of course, being a refresher, he does give you that utility too. Being a unique dancer in this day and age is really hard because we've got free peony and also legendary azura which give a very tough competition, but regardless of that, Groom's Wings allows Raphael to be a pretty unique dancer and a really good unit to get as a free to build player. Now let's go over some of his builds. The first build is a budget dual ploy build. So he has got ridiculous amounts of resistance and this could be used with the uh, ploy skills which are available on grail units. We don't really have easy access to sabotage skills unfortunately so if you're running a budget build then this is what you could do with Fury. You could also run Triangle Adept and uh, just have buffing skills as you could have on a standard dancer because he doesn't have the highest attack so that could help him. And the third build is for Infantry Pulse and Gale for support. So because he's an infantry unit, on top of providing minus one special cooldown to the support partner, he can provide the minus one special cooldown with Infantry Pulse as well. And this can be super useful in Aether Raid's offense for a Gale Force team. He can also provide you with Sabotage Attack debuff, which can be really helpful for triggering Heavy Blade on many of your Gale Force units. And now we begin with some really really cool builds for Raphael. Because he's a 4 star focus unit on this banner, on average in 400 to 500 orbs you could plus and merge him and the 99th percentile here is just the worst case scenario. So this graphic was created by the mass summoning simulator, you can check that out in the description, it's really good for planning your orbs. So Raphael can run these kinds of builds, the first one is an etherate skill force build. Because Raphael is very fast, he can use Flashing Blade 4 to trigger Gale Force and not having that high attack might actually be useful because he doesn't one-shot units that way. So he can be used in a Gale Force team pretty effectively because he can give the minus one special cooldown to his support partner and he can also Gale Force himself and Aetherate has a lot of really squishy mages so he's easily gonna be able to trigger his Gale Force. Quick and Pulse is definitely required to make his Gale Force a 4 turn cooldown special. The next build is a max resistance meme build with uh, with Fortress Defense Res, Fortress Resistance Sacred Seal and Glacies. This build is just there to show you how much high resistance he can actually get. This is not a serious build but still I thought I would just put this here. And the other build is using Flashing Blade 4 and Special Spiral to basically nuke Glacies uh, whenever he doubles. And he's going to be doubling a lot because he is pretty decently fast. So this build could be run if you want to make most out of Glacies. And because he's an infantry beast, he can get extra 10 damage whenever he triggers a special. And that's why abusing Iceberg Glacies is actually not that bad for him, even though he doesn't have the highest attack. Now here are some other really cool interesting builds for him. These are probably not the most optimal ones but because of his high resistance, these options are open for him so if you really like him you could invest like this. So he might be one of the few units who's really good user of Distant Ward because he has no business taking on archers and physical units because his defense isn't really that high but he can absolutely murder mages, dragons and also staff units. So the first build is with lull attack speed and flashing blade allows you to trigger iceberg in a single combat in the enemy phase. The other build is for instant iceberg so once a special spiral is ready he can retaliate back with iceberg and that does so much damage it's actually ridiculous. 
so he kind of makes up for his low attack stat. And the third build is using Null Counter Disrupt so that he can take care of Dazzling Staff units. Bright Nyla is an infantry green beast and uh, this was the south spread I was expecting on her. I was pretty on point with her speed at 41, really on point with her attack too, I just missed that by one point and also were like spot on with her defense. Um, so I'm pretty happy with my speculation on Bright Nyla. The main competition Bright Nyla faces is from Yarn and New Year Leith and uh, both of these units are pretty good in player phase just like Bright Nyla. Yarn is able to be a really good Gale Force unit, and New Year Leith is able to be a really, really deceptively tanky unit because of her weapon. However, Bride Nyla can do a different thing compared to these two Green Beast units. So she can spam specials because of her weapon. So this weapon gives her minus one special cooldown, and at the start of combat, if the foe is above 75% health, she gets minus five speed, defense, and attack debuff on the foe during the combat, and if the special triggers before or during the combat, and if she attacked, then she can grant herself minus one special cooldown after the combat. So basically, this can allow her to get the in-combat debuffs, which can stack up with visible debuffs. And the final condition of this weapon basically gives her a mini special spiral. So this does work with damaging specials and stuff like Miracle, but it doesn't really work with Gale Force. So she cannot really do the whole Gale Force thing, and Yarn does that much better anyways. So because she's an infantry BC net, whenever she's transformed and triggers her special, she's able to get plus 10 damage. And this damage is true damage, of course, and this can be stacked up with Wrath and Slot B. And because she can spam specials, this can actually be a pretty nice thing for her damage output. This effect, of course, does stack up with Special Spiral, and that makes for a lot of really, really juicy builds for special spam. So Nyla can be a really, really fun player phase BC net to use. She also has a super boon in speed, which unfortunately doesn't really do too much for her because she doesn't have access to close call or repel because she's a BC net. As for her builds, she has got uh, this super budget build with Deathblow and Moonbow. In my opinion, Moonbow isn't the optimal special for her because the in combat debuff from Bright's Fang actually works against Moonbow, so you get less damage output, and I feel like Glimmer is a much better option. The second build is also a budget build using Glimmer and Hit and Run. So Hit and Run with Glare does a pretty good synergy because you can Glare the units uh, beside the target and then you just get out of there with Hit and Run. So it's really good and Deathblow does give you more damage with Glimmer. And the third build is using Wrath. Uh, it's a pretty budget build I would say because Astrum is available in the Grail Pool. And Wrath with her weapons effect when she's transformed allows you to get plus 20 special damage output. Wrath with her mini special spiral in her weapon can allow her to spam bonfire. She can also run something like Draconic Aura with Desperation because she is pretty much a player phase unit and Desperation is a really good skill for that. And Draconic Aura becomes a 2 turn cooldown special and after her mini special spiral is active in her weapon, Draconic Aura becomes a 1 turn cooldown special which you could trigger in the Desperation range. And she can also run a Loud skill to combine it with the in combat debuffs from Bright's Fang. And this can pretty much give you minus 8 attack and defense debuff, which is a lot. And this can stack up with defense smoke, which is a visible debuff. So she can just spam 4 turn cooldown specials like Dragon Fang. And you can even run something like Astra with death blow and defense smoke. And this could also be spammable. You could run sturdy impact and slotty skill and have sturdy blow and rouse speed defense from Ferdinand. And basically boost up her defense for a massive Ignis that can be spammed with special spiral and her weapon. She can also run a build like this with distant counter advantage and basically be a mini Ares. Her damage output is not going to be of that level but still this is an option nonetheless. Oboro is a sword infantry unit and I really didn't expect this kind of stat spread. I was just honestly hoping that she would be like the normal Oboro, but uh, yeah, I just fell flat on this kind of speculation. The only thing I was close to is probably her defense. I was really far away from her attack, speed, resistance, everything, so really didn't see this coming. Oboro being a sword infantry unit with no preferred weapon is, uh, how do I put it, dead on arrival I would say? Now, this is not to say that she's a bad unit, but because she's a sword infantry unit with no preferred weapon, she faces insane amount of competition. And finally enough, her stat spread is really really similar to Shannon, who has a preferred weapon, that's super good, 
And also he has got a preferred special. And Oboro is a seasonal inet. She's not even in the normal summoning pool like Shannon. So Shannon is going to be appearing multiple times in many banners. And he can be a pity breaker unit as well. Oboro, on the other hand, is a seasonal unit. So it's really, really hard to justify pulling for her. Especially when uh, she gets pretty outclassed. But this is not to say that she's a bad unit. Far from it because her stat spread is basically the same as Shannon. It's just that she doesn't have a preferred weapon. So her weapon is Pledge Blade Plus, which is one of the most top tier inheritable weapons in my opinion. So if any kind of visible status or buff is active on the foe, then you get plus for attack and defense during the combat, and special cooldown plus one per foe's attack during the combat. So this kind of effect is really similar to Owain's Mistletane effect, and also the Weighted Lance Weapon Refine of Gwendolyn, so you can get an idea of how this weapon functions. So you basically get special cooldown on the hits of the enemy and this opens up a lot of really really good options for cavalry and flying units who don't have access to breath skills. They cannot even run flashing blade and the only kind of special acceleration that they have got is heavy blade. So this kind of weapon could be run on those kinds of units and uh, it's gonna be a really really fun thing to do. Here are a few examples of that. Ryoma can just run this with Bushido and get more out of this. Now you could say that he could just run Sling Edge to have Draconic Aura at 2 cooldown, but the thing is that Sling Edge doesn't give him extra attack or defense, which he desperately needs. Uh, Xander, unironically, <laughs> makes use of this weapon better than Siegfried because Siegfried is just not good with his low resistance. You could actually run Disencounter with this weapon and that would be much better, or you could just stick with the uh, melee specialist build. There are units who do have preferred weapons, but they are not really the greatest. Pala is also among them, so she can run a mixed phase build like this with blue flame and dual bond skills, which can be really nice with flyer formation. Armor units who have got Bolt Fighter and Ventral Fighter have really good synergy with this uh, kind of blade because you get the special cooldown on foe's hit with this weapon, and with Ventral Fighter and Bolt Fighter, you get special cooldown on your attacks. So it goes perfectly well. And you could also run this on a unit like Soleil who doesn't really have a preferred weapon and she can function as this kind of tank and she can instantly retaliate back with noon time to heal some HP. Oboro is just getting ready as a bride and we're already planning to fodder her off to these kinds of Norian scums. Oboro completely dumps her resistance and has got fantastic top tier defense at 40 base defense and workable speed at 35 and really high attack at base 39, which is one of the higher attack stats that Sword Infantry units have got. So this allows her to be a physical melee specialist in a way, with high defense and high attack. She's got Odd Pulse Tie as a new skill, and uh, as I explained in my first impression, I don't think this is as good as Even Pulse Tie, and Even Pulse Tie is just much better for Ether Raid's offense. Odd Pulse Tie does have a better usage in Ether Raid's defense, where you might get attacked by a player who has got instant Gale Force with their units, or is using someone like Duo Alphonse and really relies on their special, but it's a really small niche, and overall, Even Pulse Tie is a much better skill to use in your hands. Oboro honestly has a lot of builds and I could go over and over and it would be like more than 30 builds with all of the options that she's got available. So I'm basically going to be featuring her main builds and just to give you an idea how you could build her. So the first build is a budget build, just the enemy face build with her default slotty skill and with sturdy stance. She can just function in the enemy phase. The second build is a budget fast tank build with steady posture because that's available on Thea and Raisin. And to activate her weapons condition you could use swap with a Link skill, which is easily available on Cynthia. And the third build is using Sturdy Stance 3, however this could be used with Sturdy Stance 2 as well, and this basically allows her to trigger Aether in a single round of combat, because she can get special cooldown on enemies' heads with her weapon, and with Heavy Blade she can get special cooldown on her attacks. You could also run a build with Special Spiral, and she can just uh, have Infinite Ignis, which is going to be doing devastating amounts of damage with her high defense. And you could always go with the Defense Super Boon, or if you get lucky with that. And she can also function as a mixed phase unit, because her speed is quite workable. So by going with plus speed IV with really high investment, she can work with Null Follow Up and basically trigger Ignis in both phases with the Weapon and Flashing Blade. And finally, she can just work in the enemy phase, pretty straightforward with something like Sturdy Stance, which doesn't really allow the enemy to charge up their specials. And with even more high investment, you could go with Steady Posture 3, just fodder Shannon to flex on him and have Oboro with this skill. She can get ridiculously fast to make really good use of Flashing Blade and Trigger Ignis 
in enemy phase and uh, could also use her as a ultimate tank but you would have to let go of her weapon and have something like barrier blade because she really really needs some resistance she can work with stuff like close call and repel because her speed is workable and finally if you just want to flex on archers then you can run distant foil she's one of the few very good users of distant foil because of her stat spread she has no business taking on mages and against archers and physical units you can get this kind of buff and she can just destroy them with a lot of defense and a lot of attack. So that's gonna be the review of this banner. I feel like the star of this banner is definitely duo Mikaya and Raphael. Raphael, because he's easily available, can be a nice dancer to add into your barracks and he does provide you with nice utility and support depending on what kind of units you run with him as I showed you. And duo Mikaya's uh, duo skill is absolutely busted with that true damage. Can just give any kind of ally such good damage output and opens up a lot of options. Even as a one-off copy, Mikaya can be very powerful. And I'm someone who has used Brave Mikaya in Aether Raids and have constantly got to tier 27 by just using a unmerged Brave Mikaya. So this kind of duo Mikaya can definitely do even better um, even when she's just unmerged. But the thing is that it's really really hard to get merges on these kinds of units and there's no guaranteed 5 star unit after 40 summons so that could suck and that could just take way more orbs than you actually planned to get one of these units that you really want. If you already use any kind of broadly fan user then I don't think you really need Brave Micaiah because broadly fan is way more consistent and can work on any turn instead of the duo skill which only works for one turn. So that is going to be it for this unit review and build. I hope you guys enjoyed. I want to thank all of my YouTube members for their support. And if you enjoyed this video, then please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps me tremendously. And share this video with your friends who are pulling on this banner. And when you subscribe, be sure to hit the notification bell. Because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as that Edelgard sanity after being taken out by a level 1 Donald. So with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.